Hey, what's up guys, it's Seth from Workbench and today we're gonna to talk about creating an interesting mat in Cinema 4D to use in After Effects. This week we're gonna take a look at creating some mats inside of Cinema 4D that later Joe's gonna use inside of After Effects. I discovered a couple things along the way that I'd like to share, so let's get started. I started out by creating a camera. I set the position to zero, zero, and then negative 700 on the Z, and ending pitch and bank are all set to zero. Then I created a plane, and this plane is 700 by 400 with nine segments and six segments. Now the idea here is that I want to like reveal each one of these boxes, and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna break up the boxes even more. So let me show you how I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna make this editable. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go select and select all, and then I'm gonna go into mesh and under commands, I'm going to go into disconnect, but I'm going to go into the cog here and I'm going to change this from preserve groups so that it disconnects each face by itself. So now if I select one of these polys, see it's not connected to any of them. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a few random polys in here. I'm going to subdivide these more than I had the other ones. I'm going to go into mesh, commands, and subdivide. And I'm just going to do regular subdivision and probably going to do just two. All right, so now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do select all again, and I'm going to go to mesh, commands, disconnect, make sure that preserve groups is off, and hit OK. So that's the first step. So now I got a bunch of polygons set up the way I wanted to. So now the next part is I'm going to take these polys, and I want to reveal them from left to right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to break up all of these polygons out into their own separate objects. And that's mostly because I want to be able to control where the animation is happening from and just a straight MoGraph it's going to happen directly from the center. So I'm going to start out by selecting this, go to make sure I've got all my polys selected and then I'm going to go to mesh and go to conversion and then down here at the bottom it's polygon groups to objects. I'm going to do that and it's going to give me an object for every single poly. Now I'm going to get rid of the original one. So I've got now a polygon for everything. But I want my anchor points to be on the edge here. So I can do this a couple different ways, but the easiest way is going to be to select them all. Then I'm going to go to Mesh, Axis Center, and I'm going to use the Axis Center tool here. And I want to move the Axis Center to the selected polygons, and I want to move it all the way to the along the x-axis to the far right. So it's still going to stay in the center, but it's going to be on the far right-hand corner. So if I hit Execute, you see it moved all my axes to the right-hand side of the object. Now, the only thing is here, these smaller ones, I kind of want them to happen from above, maybe a few of them anyway. So I'm gonna go in here, uh, I'm gonna go to Object, and I'm gonna select these here. I'm gonna use those right there. And I'm gonna move the axis centers on these back to the center and then to the top. So the same thing, I go to Mesh, Axis Center, Axis Center Tool, and it's Axes to Selected Polygons. I'm gonna do, set that to zero. And execute, that's going to put them all back in the middle. And then I want them to go to the top, positive 100, and hit execute, and there it goes. All right, so that's the first part of the setup. Second part of the setup becomes a little more complicated. Because if I stick all of these into a fracture object, the fracture object does not see the axis points or the axes. It assumes that it's object center. So in order to trick it, you have to group each one of these uh, by itself. Now there's a tool that, that kind of does this already for you, but essentially if you needed to do it manually, you can just select one and do Alt G, which is group, and it'll give you a null right in the right place. The tool that I'm going to be using is called HB Group, and it's part of HB Tools. I'll put a link in the description. His tools are fantastic for modeling and stuff. Um, but this is one of those repetitive tasks that this tool is great for. So if I go in and I'm going to do Shift C, I'm going to do HB group, and here it is right here. And I'm going to click the button and boom, it automatically did it for me. All of my objects are in a null in the place where my axis center was, including my camera, which I shouldn't have done, but that's okay. So I'm going to create a fracture object and then I'm going to stick all my bits inside the fracture object. So now that I have these set up, I can set up some animators to essentially scale from right to left. So I'm going to grab a plane effector and I'm going to set the plane effector to remap. Leave it at node, just to zero, zero, and then I'm going to set to X to one. And then I'm going to create a spherical field. So we're going to do that. And I'm going to change the contour here to be, uh, let's use curve. It's a nice smooth transition here. And then I'm just going to scale the field up. Oops. Whoa. I'm going to move it off screen. 
Now you can see I'm scaling from the wrong direction, so I need to change that to be, so it needs to be zero, zero, and one in the Y. So I'm gonna grab my scale here, I'm gonna make it like a thousand, maybe 1500. And I'm gonna keyframe that, and then I'm gonna go down about 40 or so, and set this to zero. So I'll play it back here. Now you can see this is not doing exactly what we want. It's mostly because the position is in the wrong place. And actually I want to move it more that way. So now if you play it back. So now the second part of this is that I wanted these other ones that I had set to go from the top down, I want to change those. So I want to set a selection for those. So if I go in here and I do a MoGraph, MoGraph selection, I'm just going to select these ones that I want to animate from top to bottom. Those, and this one, and these. I'm going to create a second plane effector. I'm going to drag that into my effectors tab here. And for right now, I'm only going to activate that one. And I'm going to create a spherical field for that particular area. So I'm going to grab a sphere. And we know we have these here and these over here. So I'm going to do two of these spherical fields. And I'll move the other one over there. And we also know that we want the Y and not the X. So I'm going to set this to zero and I'm going to set the Y to one. And I need to make sure that both my fields are in here. Drop that one in there. And I want to set this one to add. So now they're both in here and we can set these to size as well. I want them to happen a little bit after the other ones. So we're going to go probably around 16 or so. I'm going to set that there. And then at 36 or so, I'm going to set that to zero. Keyframe that and the same for the other one. So I'm going to check these, check this animation out real quick. The one thing I forgot to do was on the plane effector here, I forgot to point it directly at that selection so that it's not affecting anything else. I'm going to do that now, just drag it in here. Now it's only affecting those two areas. Now I need to move this one here up a little bit and I need to change its scale a little bit more. I'm going to go to its first keyframe here. I'm going to set it to 150, uh, 155 probably. I'm going to keyframe that. Let's set it right there. You can see that one reveals that one. But realistically, we want this to work backwards. So I want it to start like this. Okay, and then I'm going to adjust the other one the same way. I'm going to change this to 150 as well. And I'm going to check it now. So you can see now that they're working perfectly. So I can turn on my other plane effector now. And we can watch the animation back. I think I want to change the timing here just a slight bit. Select all of these keyframes and slide them down. Now I want to randomize the reveal on the main plane effector. So I'm going to go in here and create a random field. I'm going to set that to multiply. And on this random field, I want to change it so that it's set to noise. And I'm going to scale it up to be like probably 450. Actually, I want to set it to overlay. And you can see it's nice and varied. And I think I want to do the same thing to the other one. So same idea. I'm going to go in here, create a random field, set it to overlay. I'm going to set that to noise. And I'm going to do probably, actually probably 100 is probably good on this one because it's a lot smaller. Yep, there you go. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is create a shader for this. So we're creating a mat, so the shader is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to make the mat by creating a new material. I'm gonna only use luminance. I'm gonna turn off color, turn off reflectance, go to luminance. And then in luminance here, I'm gonna go down to MoGraph, color shader. So once you have your color shader set in here, you're gonna to wanna to go into your plane effector and turn on color on your random field and the same for your other plane effector. So now if you play this back, you can see we have a little color layer right at the edge there. And we're gonna use this color layer in After Effects to do a displacement map. So the color, if you were just using this as a straight matte, it wouldn't matter. But in this case, we're gonna use it. So that's it. I'm gonna just set this up to render. Uh, there's nothing fancy about this render. I'm gonna just leave it at standard. I am gonna give myself a little anti-aliasing set to best. And that's about it in cinema. I'm gonna shoot it over to Joe and let him finish this off. Okay, so to make the perfect cube in... No, no, wrong, wrong tutorial. Oh. Okay. So I took the mats that Sev built, and I made a few different versions of this text, animation, a bunch of different kind of iterations of this mat setup. These are all pretty much built the same way, but if you want more information on exactly how these are done, you can grab the project file from our website for a dollar. So let's take a look at this one, Mat 07. Let's turn off this subtle noise, it's just over top to give it kind of a nice look. And let's start really at the bottom here. Let's solo the background. And the first text layer we have here. And 
basically to each one of these things, we're just using Sev's original mat, which looks like this, as a Luma mat. I've scaled it down just to keep some of this block size a little smaller. But you can also use this full size in your comp. When we initially built this, we rendered these out as two different mats. One is white and one is colored. If you want to make the white mat, you can run something like Threshold over top of it, or you can extract out the black, fill it with white, and then solid composite and some black in the background. Or you can crush it with levels, hue sat, whatever. So I'm going to turn that back off. And so basically this bottom layer is just CC ball action with a very tiny grid spacing, and the ball size is 50. Hopefully that's not inadequate. <sighs> anyway, uh, we have another text layer here, and it has the same thing kind of set up, and we've moved the mat around a little bit, and this text is red. Above that, we have the same thing going on, and this text is white. Then above that, we have some adjustment layers. The first one is an echo, which echoes everything five times, and it decays by 0.32, and the echo time is 0.04 seconds ahead. So we get these ghosted images of what is to come. So in the next layer, we are multiplying this adjustment layer, and we're doing a find edges. So without this on, you don't really get any of this edge detail. So this kind of adds an edge to the text overall, which I could take or leave, but it also adds like a darker line in between of all these kind of color boundaries. And then above that, we have an adjustment layer with a displacement map on it. And that's looking down here to this displacement map comp. And that's using the colored mat that Sev made. Again, it's scaled down just to kind of better fit our comp. So I'm gonna jump back, like digital juice. So then above that, we have this interesting piece. And if I turn off everything in here, let's click all this down. Boom, click, click, click. You can see I have a set mat. And this is just looking at the layer itself and it's grabbing luminance. And then we're gonna crush that down with extract. And this thing is pretty cranked to basically mostly just get the white in the brightest areas. Then we have minimax on top of that. And this minimax is actually stretching everything only horizontally. And I have this thing set to alpha in color so that it makes sure that it actually stretch everything so you can still see it. And then I have a second one that stretches everything vertically. And it's by a less amount, only two. Then we fill it with red. And then we CC composite the original stuff back in behind, turning off RGB only, so we actually get everything back in there. That is also matted out with one of our mats, because otherwise it would just fill in everything, like that. So by having that mat on there, we reduce the amount of red that we have in here. Then above that, I have another thing called X-Bit Grid, which you guys have seen in different things before. And this guy is matted to match the text of one of the layers itself. In this case, it's layer 14, so the bottom piece of text. And then it's also matted with one of our mats. And then again, we have subtle noise back on top of that. And I'm gonna unsolo all of these things. And now you can see that's what it looks like. One thing to note too is that we've remapped all of these mats. The main ones in this comp are the same. The one that does the displacement though is a little bit longer so that we kind of get this push and then pull at the end. So what's really cool about this is that because of how this is set up, you don't have to just use text. So we have one with our logo. So it's like that. In this case, we've changed this to white because of the way that this uh, adjustment layer is set up to pull in the mat. If you have a different color in here or whatever, you're just gonna have to modify your extract or use maybe a levels or something like that to set up these red pieces to fill in how you want them to be. And then for our thumbnail, we've just done the same thing, but just use the laptop in the background. And it does that. And then for the final thumbnail itself, basically took copies of this last mat with the laptop I shifted them in time from each other. There's three down here. I matted out different pieces, and the bottom one has a ball action on it, the grid spacing of two and a ball size of 60. And then the next one is added on top of it, and then this one with the red, otherwise this is kind of faded, it has a set mat set to saturation, and it's just set to normal. And for this one that's added over top of the mask that it has, it's just really feathered out, so you kind of get a gradient in here, and I kind of like that, so I went with it instead of the default, which would look like this if you turn off the ball action which is cool, but eh, I don't know. This was kind of a happy accident, I like it. Anyway, that's it. Hopefully you guys can use this to make something cool. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe because we do one every week. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure to keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I'm Joe, and we'll see you next week. Bye. No Sev? Bye. Sorry. <laughs>
come with me and I'll show you the way.